thermometer says 35 degrees, but uh, when you got low temperature and high speed winds, that temperature just drops significantly. I may not be in Colorado weather, weather, but I can surely tell you right now that whenever it snows in Colorado, all that cold breeze is gonna come down to New Mexico. That's another good thing too. I don't have to worry about snow. I don't have to worry about those damn winds. I should have kept that on. Hey guys, it's Skinwalker coming at you with another uniform de Vermach and I'm gonna show you show off my last Christmas gifts to myself. I know it's in the middle of February, but come on, I mean, give me some time. I've been doing a lot of projects and I'm barely catching up with uniform de Vermach. So <clears throat> what you guys already know <clears throat> is my talk. As you can already see that I already wore it in a really good fashion. It's it's really comfortable, it's really neat. Most importantly of all, it's made out of wool and it's, it's kind of it's a little itchy here and there, but once you start washing it, I mean you'll feel you won't even you won't even notice it, okay? That's that's how insignificant it really is. And it should be a part of your winter apparel because you want to protect your face and you want to protect your ears as well. I mean you want to reinforce that, especially in the back of your neck. Wherever the wind is definitely gonna hit you, it will hit you and it'll hit you hard than anything else in this world. Uh, so be sure to give yourself a talk. I usually wear it with the beanie. Well, might as well just show you. And there you go. My talk is secure. Be able to walk around with it, just like so. My ears are protected. My back of my the back of my neck is protected. And most importantly of all, it's also secured with uh, with my beanie on top as well. So that's really good. That's very, that's very good in my point of view. I mean, that's another good day. So give me some more time on the helmet. I will get a helmet. It's just a matter of time. I just got my windows fixed. And most importantly of all, I am depleted on funds right about now. So give me some time, guys. Give me some time. <clears throat> Number two on the list, mittens. Now, they're not your standard issue German Army mittens, but they do come close as to being the real thing. Well, most importantly of all, these are World War I Austrian-made mittens. I don't know how long they survived all the way to the 21st century, but I'm blessed that I'm actually using a pair of these. They're very comfortable, and most importantly of all, I managed to get this side as well. Well, they're both they're both mix and match. Well, one side is clearly used to be for another side, while the other side is not, you know, like how, how the other side is supposed to be. But I will really love this side. It really helps out with my battling, and especially with an aerosol. So it'll be, my trigger finger is free, and it's freezing and most importantly of all, and, and these really do help me with protection when it comes down to BBs as well. They are made out of wool and they're, and they're secured with canvas uh, laces on top of them. So they're just made with a little buckle right here. So if you just want to tighten them, just all it takes is one little, one little snug with the fasteners and let friction do all the work. It's not going to loosen anytime soon. And if you want to remove it from your hand, just be sure to take the, the belt right here. Get some pressure right there, and there you go. Very simple system, very, very simple, unlike most combat mittens that I've seen in World War II, uh, military. And again, I really like them. They're really tough, they're really durable, and they protect my hands no matter what, especially if I'm going up against guys who really have really, who have really, really tough um, guns, and they just, uh, like polar stars, I mean, that, that's really painful, and they protect my hands. Well, not to the point of, you know, like they're invulnerable, but just to the point of, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be safe. I'm definitely going to be safe. I'm going to be safe from getting scarred. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's what I got. And again, they are Austrian made. And you probably just ask yourself, well, how come you're not buying um, standard issue German Army mittens? Well, because number one, again, my kit is nothing more but a late 1945 loadout. I mean, everything is up for grabs. Everything is missing from my kit almost everything that's not essential or not going to be used in combat is just going to be used for strictly for combat basically anything to fight the soviets and through that luckily i have some mittens that the local um, quartermaster managed to raid a very very old um stockade of worth of old stuff back in the war and remember as well germany was using stuff from world war one as well i mean i i don't think it would be um 
I really don't think that this is probably out of the ordinary because like I said, again, Germany was using stuff <clears throat> late in the war. This also includes Desert Africa Corps stuff that was used in North Africa. Believe it or not, Germans were using that world, using basically everything that they get their hands on worked by the Soviets. I mean, they were you, they were throwing stuff on conscripts that there was pretty much mix and match, pretty much um, like how it is right now. Like how I'm not wearing a standard issue on uh, wool tunic, um, I'm using my uh, herringbone twill uh, tunic. And with the wind out there, it was really cold out there, no matter what. And, and be sure to wear an undershirt too. Be sure to wear an undershirt if you are going to use an HPT tunic. And to help deter the cold weather, combat bands. Austrian Army combat bands. They really work. I really love them. Really glad my friend found them for me. Long time ago. Long time ago. It was during December. Like I said again, I, I know I'm making this video in February and I'm talking about my Christmas gifts, but you know what? This is what I have to do for you guys, okay? This is what I'm doing for you guys. And now, last but not least, <clears throat> my bread bag. Yay, I got a bread bag. Something to put on my battle belt, or something to put on my belt. Now, first off, if you're gonna ask yourself, well, you're probably gonna ask yourself for many times or throughout the entire day, why do you need a bread bag? Well, because during, in the, well, in the field, you're definitely gonna get rations of how much you're supposed to eat and how much water you're supposed to intake throughout the entire day, especially if you're out in the field. So the German army distributed this, okay, bread bag to hold all your stuff. In, in any other case, you'll be able to hold your miscellaneous stuff, okay, and be able to put it in there. This practically your home away from home. But for me, as an aerosol author, I really don't use it for that, putting that much stuff in. Stop putting that much stuff inside of it. I put my dead rag inside of it. And most importantly of all, as an airsofter in tactical applications, I use it for a dump pouch, as you can see right there. Put all my magazines that are pretty much empty and I just throw toss them in there because, I, you know, I th really think that the Germans were really ahead of their time. I mean, well, in some cases that they were, in some cases that they were not into the well, into the concept, like, it wasn't a real concept until, you know, it was established later on. But I really believe that the Germans used their bread bags as, as, as actual, as, 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 I really believe that the Germans used their bread bags as nothing more, but, well, three to one. Now I say again, the German bread, three to one. Now, whether either or not the Germans were ahead of their time or not, I really believe that the German bread bag was used as a dump pouch, because if you look back, in the days of World War II, especially um, when the application of the Sturmgewehr 43 was, I mean, when Sturmgewehr 44 was put into service, everything was worth its weight in gold. Magazines, ammunition, um, well, those two and two together, if you know what I mean. So I'm basically telling you guys that they, I think they really used the bread bag as a dumb pouch later on in the war. Everything in 1945 or possibly even to early 1944, everything was worth its weight in gold because the Germans knew that they were going to lose the war and they knew that they had to use everything they can to apply in battle. I mean, I think the bread bag is one of those things. And you're probably going to ask yourself, there's other stuff that you, I should definitely cover about the bread bag, but I'll get into that soon. I mean, especially with this strap and this strap. You're probably going to ask me later on, what is this bag made out of? Well, back then in World War II, everything was pretty much made out of either wool, cotton, or canvas. And this is a canvas bread bag. It's not going to last long, so I know for a fact that if I do keep it out in the weather for a long time, it's definitely going to degrade and it's definitely going to get more dirtier and it's going to get more damaged, so I don't want anything to happen to my little bread bag. It's my little bread bag. Well, it's fine. Okay? Leave it alone. I'll touch it. All right, this thing did come with a shoulder strap, but unfortunately, I, I bought this off. Well, I did bought this off of my buddy, but he didn't have a shoulder strap because he used it for more kick-ass applications, but uh, I'd rather have it, something around my belt, you know, just to start off with, okay? And to put it on your belt, all you gotta do is just put the fasten it over your belt like so, unfortunately. All right, I'm gonna get into something more about the bread bag, okay? If you guys are gonna buy a reproduction model or something that was basically that yeah, you bought from a local surplus store or possibly even from online, be sure to do what I didn't do. Reinforce the buttons at all costs, okay? Because number one, I really don't trust the fact that they actually had to, you know, well, First of all, they should have reinforced them. Reinforced them to the point that they know that they're gonna go out into the field and they know that they're gonna get damaged like this, okay? And as you can also plainly see, I'm losing, I just recently lost another button, so it's gonna be another fight for me just to get something like that. <clears throat> and there's also two buttons right here as well for, um, well, um, once you get under the 
bread bag as well. So there's two buttons right here, so you're able to keep stuff. So like I said before, I use it as a dump pouch. So I'll be able to lift it up from this side and dump my magazines in, inside of it. And there's also a fastener, well, a leather strap fastener right here so that you won't have to mingle with mingle with your bread bag for a long time. I don't like so. Oh, I'm gonna get it unfastened. Ah, there we go. Uh, so everything is not not whole well everything is not drooping out slowly drooping out in case if you do overload it with a lot of stuff so yeah that's what the fastener is for and like I said again sure to reinforce your buttons that's ready to come off that is definitely ready to come off and probably the only thing that saved my bread bag from <clears throat> getting lost out into the wilderness and I have to buy a new one is this one, the belt hook. The belt hook itself probably saved it. It's pro it was probably holding on by a literal thread, just holding on like that. You know? Well, pretty much holding on to this side right here and just being, and just running around all over the place just like so. I'm not. I'm not going to complain much about. It. I mean, it's. 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 I mean, this. You're. You're going to get damaged stuff within this sport, okay? Especially if you're going to go cosplaying out into the wilderness and just be a German soldier. Uh, that's one of the follies I have right right there. So yeah, that's my position. Oh yeah, it also came in green as well. Most of these bread bags also come in uh, mouse gray or or well, other other miscellaneous colors. But luckily, I got a green one. Okay, so. I know in most military simulations games that the color of your gear doesn't really matter, but hopefully this does reinforce the fact that I am a green. I am green. Hopefully this reinforces the fact that I am a green team member and do not shoot me because everything is green. Well, partially green. So those are my Christmas presents to myself. I know this smooth. I know I'm talking about this in February, but I should have been making this made this in December. But what are you gonna do? All right, guys, that's pretty much where I'm at right now, and I'm sorry for the, the extreme delay of showing off my Christmas gifts, but like, like, like I said, again, it's just trying to put more projects out, and most importantly of all, I'm going into more World War II enthusiasm to show off to the, to the regular audience, and there, I believe that there are some stuff that history has forgotten about World War II. It's not just all um, bad guy versus good guy anymore. I really believe that we should put some more humanity into World War II because, again, this is the biggest war in all of human history, and this is the number one reason why I started this, why I really started this um, loadout in the first place. Because, again, that's how I feel strongly feel that how important this war was, and the fact that I'm starting with the German one. I mean, <laughs> aside from all the hate on Instagram, I really feel comfortable. What the heck? And that's pretty much what I got. I'd like to thank you guys as well for watching and putting up with me for a long time and those are my Christmas gifts that I bought for myself and well I'm back in December 2018 and we're now in 2019 I can't believe it we made it this far my channel is officially two years old again guys I'd like to thank you for watching and be sure to like share and subscribe be sure to become a subscriber because the more subscribers I get the more content I'll be able to push out and most importantly of all you'll be able to see more of my German kit because I'm definitely going to be playing a lot with this stuff, stuff on. I mean, what's the point of me putting all this stuff together and I'm not going to use it? That's that's lame, okay? That's absolutely lame within itself. All right, guys. Hopefully, I'll see you all out on the battlefield. And this is Skinwalker. Signing off.